Hi, okay. Hey, everybody. Testing the mailbag sound. Hopefully you can hear me okay. I know we can hear you fine. Uh, okay, where am I? I didn't think this all the way through. I just thought it might be fun to do mailbag with gadgets since the kids downstairs were all sleeping so nicely until I went in there to plug in the microphone, of course. It still gets plugged in down there even when I'm up here. And some of them, I think, woke up and took notice. And, uh, you know, what can you do? I was already set up up here. I know, it should be your turn anyway, shouldn't it, cutie? Oh, you're so cute. Yeah, you've got a lot to say about it, too. Okay, I'm going to sit right here. Oh. And then I'm going to check the cameras. I'm going to check the sound. Check everything. Check, check. Oh, I wanted to turn that camera just a little bit. Even though it's, it's pretty straight, uh, it doesn't look entirely straight. Let's see. Actually, it's not entirely straight visually. Is that better? Did I make it worse? Because it looks straighter. Let's see what I can tell. Hi, kiddo. Yeah, that looks better too, I think. Okay, good. It looks better to me anyway. And how are we over here? Looking good. Okie dokie. Um, and the sound check. Can you hear me? Tommy, can you hear me? Sound breaking. Uh oh. Well, let's see. Once I've settled down. Oh, being boosted too much. Um, yeah, you know what? It probably is. Uh, but I have to go all the way downstairs, I think, to change it as far as I know. If that's the only problem, great. Um, I will. Actually, you stay with me. Stay with me for a minute. Okay. By you, I mean Cranko. I was going to leave her here, but now I'm thinking. She can ride downstairs with me one more time. Let me just go and turn it down one notch and see what happens. I'll be right back. Unfortunately, I have to, have to go all the way down here to where I've been plugging in the microphone. I mean, theoretically, I could find a place to plug it in up there, but I haven't. Okay, uh, where's the volume for this? A or B? Hmm. Test, test, test. Oh, wow. That's, okay, it seems much lower. It's only one notch lower, but let's see. Is that better? Uh, you guys can tell me. Check, check. How are we doing? Does that sound a little bit? I know. Now all you kids are awake and you want to play, but I'm sorry, you missed your chance. They'll get a chance to go out and run around later, of course. Um, let's see here. Check, check. Better, better. How much better are we? On a scale of one to two. Oh, come on. Now I have to chase her down. I know exactly where she's going, of course. She always runs straight down to the kitchen. Because she wants the food that she thinks is there, but it isn't. Hi. No, you got to come with me. No, no, don't run from me. We're not playing a game. Oh, you want to check the kitten food? Yeah, I know. How can you be so perpetually hungry, huh? You know, uh, Crank's little basket might also have been hitting the microphone a little bit. That occurred to me. We'll take it off in a second. We'll see how we sound. Hang on. Okay. Whew. That's a lot of running around, kiddo. All right. I was already wanting to take this jacket off. Now I really want to take this jacket off. Okay. Crank, do you feel like getting up or do you feel like just hanging out in there? No, you want to get out and see your mom. Okay, there you go. You got it. You get your feet under you. Okay, how are we doing? Sound good? Okay, it sounds good. I guess we're better. <sighs> Hi. Hi, I know you're very excited. Gadget has a way. Um, she's just got her own little gadget habits. She, uh, whenever we bring her to the spa or whenever I bring her to my office to hang out, She's got to run around and play and look at all the things and just be so active. But then when she finally does decide to settle down, she usually wants to come and sit right on my lap. 
which is really sweet. It just, it takes her a long time to get there though. <laughs> She's got so much energy still. Okay, uh, let me just double check now. So it was a big week. Of course it was a very big week because this is the week that Crank had her surgery. And I wish there were more that I could tell you about it, um, but so far, all we know is that she's acting fine and that the surgery went very well, but I don't quite understand yet what the results are going to be like. Um, she's still leaking. In fact, she's leaking worse now than she was before, um, but that's probably to be expected. Um, she's heading for the litter box right now. So sweet. Oh, this litter box is a little tall. Can she get in? Oh, okay. She made it. All right, good. Um, so she's a lot leakier right now, and it's, I've had to give her even more baths uh, just constantly because um, now she's gone from, you know, being just occasionally kind of poopy to being like constantly diarrhea. And, uh, but like I was saying, I think that's to be expected. Um, it's, it's sort of the goal that we were aiming for, actually. Um, and according to what DJ had said, that's probably normal and it might last a week or two, and then we would expect her to sort of get things more under control, which would be swell. Hi, are you playing in there? You, oh, you, I thought you were gonna settle down. You sitting there? That's fine. She was just, uh, she was just sort of scratching on this like it was a scratching poster, trying to knead on it. But then I moved her stuff, and she decided no. Um, okay, so that's where we are right now. Is um, you know, as far as like her symptoms go, or things that we would want to solve. I do think that her bottom is a little less sensitive, uh, but it's not entirely. You know, like she still wants to yell and complain a lot, especially if I want to use a wipe on it. Of course, it's hard to say how much of that is just the fact that she's been so traumatized by it in the past and how much of it is actually, you know, it still is kind of sensitive. Um, so that's another thing. I think, I think really the bottom line, no pun intended, is that we just have to sort of wait and see. It's too early to sort of make any calls about whether it was a huge success or not, um, because even if it was a huge success, we wouldn't expect to see that yet. Uh, it's going to take just a little bit longer. So... Uh, that's fine though. I'm, I'm fine with, you know, as long as it needs to take. Uh, she's a real sweetie, little cutie, um, and uh, I'm fine with having to give her regular baths. She goes right into her little strawberry pod. So sweet. Um, yeah. Uh, what else? What else? What else? Uh, is there anything else I wanted to say about her? Uh, well, things will probably come to me. Um, it's, been, it's been really sweet that she's so uh, okay with being carried around in the pod. Oh, and I've sort of learned uh, just recently that, you know, she still doesn't like getting baths, but if instead of sort of trying to, so the way I used to do is I'd fill up the sink and then I would bring her and sort of dunk her back half in the sink and sort of, you know, rub things off with my hand and a uh, little bit of soap. Um, and, uh, and she would just scream and yell and it was the, oh, it was the worst torture she'd ever had. Um, and I've sort of found lately that if instead of putting her in the sink, I just have the water running and I put her butt under it and sort of use the water to, to get things off of her just by moving her around and letting the water pressure do the job, it seems like it bothers her less than having me actually like rub on stuff and sort of try to work things out. Um, so that's the way I'm going with it now. I've even been thinking about maybe taking her down to um, the kitchen sink for her baths instead where there's a sprayer and maybe I could use that and sort of make just make it easier to do what I'm doing already. Um, uh, as far as, oh, oh, you probably want to know why she's not wearing a cone. Are you going to pee there? You look like you're about to try to pee or poop right in that corner. Are you? Or are you just looking for a place to sit? Uh, anyway, she's not wearing a cone because she is not bothering her sutures at all. She hasn't been shown the slight bit, slightest bit of interest in them. Uh, and we're keeping an eye on it, of course. I monitor her all the time to make sure that she's not. Um, if she were, we would either have to put the cone or a suit on her. But as long as she is not touching her sutures, I don't see any reason for her to have to wear the, that big, unwieldy thing. And I know, um, you know, we got strict, strictest instructions from the vet to, to not use, to keep the cone on her no matter what, and not to even think about trying anything else like a suit. Um, but, you know, they, they have to say that to everybody. I'm, and... I, I don't know. I'm trying to make a joke about the fact that, you know, it's exactly the kind of person like me that would say that doesn't apply to me, uh, that it does apply to the most. <laughs> but 
Um, but no, I, I really honestly think that she's doing fine and that this is better for her that way. So whatever, we're good. We keep an eye on it. We kind of sort of know what we're doing. And, uh, you know, we certainly know how to tell if it's, if anything is going to start to cause a problem. So yeah, we'll cross that bridge if we come to it, but I don't think we will. She is doing fine. Okay, is there any news about the other kids? I don't, uh, nothing comes to mind. They did go in for their second vaccines this week and they all got a checkup. Uh, now, three out of the four um, had uh, elevated levels of uh, something. It was just a little bit outside the normal range where um, we're gonna wanna check them again for, uh, it was basically like a, like a kidney marker. Um, I don't know if it was just maybe they were a little dehydrated or something that happens all the time. So at this point, it's nothing to worry about. Um, just something to, to remember to check again when they go in to get their spays and neuters. And I do believe then that that is everything. So if I think of anything, uh, I will let you know. Let me check the chat real quick here one more time. Okie dokie. Uh, Baba Stan sent something for mailbag in a reused small chewy box. Hmm. I don't know about that, uh, but I do know that someone sent something. I'll not to, you know, there was, there is a ch small chewy box that arrived and maybe I just didn't even look to see if it was reused. I just assumed it was from chewy. Now that you're saying that I will, I will take a look. Um, and the thing that you reminded me, of course, is that someone, uh, anonymous, I guess, sent something special for us that, uh, that did arrive at the house. Um, and I think we'll sort of save the reveal on that until later, because I looked at it. And I'll just say it's the sort of thing that we're probably going to want to get out when DJ does her Christmas tree uh, setup. So that's when everybody should expect to see what it is uh, except for of course whomever it is that sent it and already knows what it is that should be enough to let you know that it arrived um, as for the chewy box let me see if i can try to remember to get up and grab it when i don't have this little tiny kitten in my lap because this is too cute and then uh, we'll make sure that it really is something that arrived that should be opened on mailbag so Okie dokie. Uh, let's see. We've got a couple flat things here that were stuffed in the mailbox. So I guess technically letters. I don't think any of them were quite letter sized though. Uh, this one is interesting. FedEx overnight. I always feel like this is going to be some kind of a legal document or something if it comes by FedEx. Uh, did it, are we getting sued? I don't know. Let's find out. Oh, oh no, we're not, but it is interesting. Um, Hmm, what is it? Oh, it's the opposite of getting sued. I see there on the receipt what it is. Oh, that's so sweet. It is a, it is a donation, um, presumably. Let's see, does it say anything for Cranky? Oh, that's what I thought. Uh, from Nancy. Oh, Nancy on Discord. That's N-A-N-Z-I-E on Discord, Nancy. For Cranky and K-A with love. Well, I can see the amount on there and that is extremely generous. Let me just say thank you so much. That'll definitely help a bit with Cranky. And I know I had said um, that, that in the end, we got a little bit of a refund on our down payment on her surgery. It was still, it was still I think, the, the most expensive surgery even with that that we've ever had, but not by as big a margin as I thought it was going to be. Uh, I think it's real close to, actually, I don't, I don't honestly remember how much millet was. Uh, I think it was in that same general neighborhood, but I'm not sure. It could have been, it could have been less. Um, it's been such a long time. I don't always remember those things. Uh, anyway, my point, Nancy, was thank you so much. That is I just, I can't even say uh, how extraordinarily generous that is and how much uh, how thoughtful it really is. Um, you know, I, I think this is a good opportunity, if you don't mind, for me to just stop and say to everybody that um, something I used to say fairly frequently as we were getting rolling with Kitten Academy, but I haven't mentioned in a while, but it's still the same sentiment, which is that, um, you know, when DJ and I started doing the kitten fostering the way that we do it, where, where we cover all of the expenses instead of letting the shelter do it, um, for a couple reasons, you know, we do that first off, uh, the, the number one reason that we do that is so that we feel like it's okay for us to make all the health decisions. If we have to go to a charity, nonprofit, 
like Dawes or On Angel's Wings that we used to work with and say to them, you know, I want this kitten to, to go into the vet, um, you know, most of them are, are operating in a state where they, they really have to think about that decision. And it's, you know, asking for, for something from them is, is never as nice as it would be. So the fact that, that we just decided to cover all that ourselves meant that we could take them in to the vet anytime we wanted. We wouldn't have to worry about whether we were causing a burden to someone, you know, we could just do it. Um, and then, of course, uh, we, we sort of promised that, that we would... Um, I said there were two reasons that we, we do it that way, didn't I? Uh, I'm trying to think of what I was going to say the other one was. But, but DJ and I um, had promised from the start that, that you know, we were going to do the fostering as long as we could. We would support them. We would do that. We would spend whatever, you know, sort of it took for the kittens. Um, and that was the commitment that we made before we even opened, uh, you know, the Patreon and stuff. But so many people wanted to help. And it's just wonderful how helpful people are. You know, everybody was like, we got so many inquiries that were like, oh, how can we contribute? You know, what can we do? And so, you know, eventually we, we gave people a couple ways to do that if that's what they really wanted. And uh, amazingly, um, ever since then, you know, it's, it's we've, I think, I, I haven't done accounting on it. Uh, it's, you know, it's not the way that things work around here necessarily. Uh, maybe they should, but they don't. Um, but I feel like we've been, uh, you've kept us uh, ahead of that the whole time where there's always been, uh, you know, sort of funds that we, we keep in, in reserve for just this sort of thing. And it's always been there before we needed it, thanks to everybody being so wonderfully generous. So the thing that I used to say all the time that I still feel is, you know, we'd like to think that, that we would have cared for just as many kittens and given them exactly the same degree of care. Uh, even if we were doing it entirely on our own. But it's so wonderful not to have to find out <laughs> whether we would or not. It's, it's just it's a, an amazing privilege and honor um, having so much help in taking care of these kids. So I'm starting to get a little choked up, and I don't want to. So we're just going to move on from there. But my point was thank you uh, not just to Nancy, but to everyone who's uh, you know, contributed in any way, uh, whether it's Patreon or just spreading the word um, or, uh, you know, sending in donations to help take care of stuff. Uh, it's all it's all amazing, wonderful, um, and, uh, uh, you know, something that, uh, yeah, I, you get my point. I just, thank you is my point. That's my point. Okay. Uh, moving on then, uh, we have certainly other things to look at there. Uh, let's see. All right, this is uh, very shiny stamps, uh, but otherwise a very plain envelope. So let's see what's going on here. All right, feels like I got something. Dear Mr. A, please enjoy this localish. Ah, yes, fantastic. Complimentary monthly publication from the Missouri Department of Conservation. Wow, uh, let's see. So encouraged to see Crank play in Zoom with the chapeaus. Oh, wow. Vive l'Academy de Chaton. I cannot speak French. Oh, and it also says here, Google help me write that. I don't actually speak French. Yes, well, now everyone knows I don't too. It's very clear at this point. Uh, Jessica in St. Louis, thank you so much. I love, like I, I've said this a million times, I love getting local papers. These little local uh, magazines are even better because the photographs are so fantastic, and these are. Um, and, oh, there's like a guide to all the various plants and flowers here. Hmm. Interesting. I'm excited to take a look through that. Oh, pecan. I don't think I've ever seen one in the wild. How about that? Um, let's see. I was going to take a look to see if there was also local ads in here, because that's always a fun thing. But there aren't. That's even, wow, these guys must be, uh, oh, well, because it's a government thing, isn't it? The conservation department. That makes too much sense. That's really fun, and I'm excited to have a look through it. So thank you so much, Jessica. Um, much, much appreciated. I always have fun with those things. I've got a little stack of papers now in my office that I go to uh, sometimes when I'm sitting there waiting for something or I just want to have a laugh or, you know, it's fun. Okay, 
Next up, this is, as you can tell from the logo, if you saw on the envelope, it's shipped from Dragon Maker, but many times it's shipped from, uh, by, I guess, someone else. This says, Mr. A and Dr. DJ. I can guess because there's two of them. One of them is for Crank and the other one is for a uh, little gadget here, but let's see. Dear Mr. A and Dr. DJ, these two wings are for Gadget and Crank and come from Aunt Susie of Camp Crazy Kitty and myself. Sorry for the brief note, I'm very busy getting ready for the first weekend at the Maryland Renaissance Festival. <gasps> Catherine the Dragon Maker and Toffee. Oh, there's a little Mew here from Toffee. That's so sweet. So, uh, Dragon Maker, we all know. Um, hopefully you know too. She's got the, um, she's on Etsy and I think some other places. And it's Dragon Maker, uh, Maker without an E, M-A-K-R, Dragon Maker. And uh, she does make the, I guess, goes to a few different Renaissance fairs and uh, festivals and uh, pedals her wares there. That's got to be so much fun. Um, you know, I've always enjoyed going to them and I've heard from people that actually, you know, have a backstage pass that, that it can get pretty wild after hours at those kinds of things. And I always thought it would probably be a really good time. Of course, I was in the SCA for a little while, which is not at all the same thing as a Renaissance festival, but also gets pretty wild uh, after hours. <laughs> so... I can imagine, I think, sort of uh, how it goes. Anyway, uh, Aunt Susie, thank you so much. And Dragon Maker, thank you as well. I'm just going to write Gadget. There's the treat balls in here um, in the in the mailbag box. There's still the treat balls in here. I think that's why she's so desperate for it. She is too smart for her own good, by the way. In the spa, um, we basically can't keep her from getting up on things if there's food, like, uh, we usually keep, you know, some snacks and stuff on our sideboard instead of in it. Um, but I have to put them away every time now because she'll get up there and knock everything off the sideboard until she's got what she wants. Um, and she's so, Gadget is so crazy about food. I eat a lot of pistachios and dates. They're my snack foods, uh, both pistachios and dates. And uh, so usually I've got like a, you know, a bunch of discarded just pistachio shells and date pits in a, in a bowl or whatever before I take them out to the trash. Just more convenient that way. And she will get up there and steal them. She prefers the date pits, but she will just as easily steal a pistachio shell and go try to chomp it, which is impossible. Those things are made out of, I don't know, titanium or something. Um, and I don't want her to break a tooth, so we don't really let her do it if we can avoid it. But she's desperate to get up there and take those things. Uh, and then the other day, I've been, I told you guys I've been drinking a lot more tea lately, going through all the teas that people have sent. Oh, it's really funny. Last week's mailbag, I said I've been drinking all these teas, and I mentioned that, my, that because someone had sent in some teas, I mentioned that my favorite was the chai, uh, the vanilla chai from Bigelow. And it turns out that that had a couple of those in it. I, I did not know that when I said so, but that was actually one of the teas that was sent. So how convenient. Uh, I already had those, of course. Um, uh, let's see, I interrupted myself. Oh, so that was my point. I've been drinking a lot more tea, so my tea bags end up in that same little pile. And the other day, she stole one of those because she'll just steal anything. If, she, if it's like food adjacent, she's going to steal it and try it. So even a tea bag. It's, she's just a, just a little food fiend. Now, let's see, can, can the treats, oh yeah, they can fit out, although that's, well, it's asking a lot, but we'll see. That'll give her something to distract her, hopefully. Uh, I feel like there was something else crazy that she tried to get into food-wise also, but uh, if I think of it, I'll mention it. She just uh, really will, will do anything <laughs> when it comes to trying to get food. Oh, I may have made that too difficult. I don't think they're going to come out after all, but... I don't know. Is there a level that's in between that and a wide open? Let's try that for you. Now, I just saw one fall out and she missed it, so that's fine. At least I know it's working. Okay, let's keep rolling here. I know I feel free to ramble a little bit because there's not a ton in mailbag this week, which is exactly how we like it. Um, let me just make sure I got everything out of here before I just consign these to be trash. Uh, oh, that's just the... Okay, yeah, there we go. All set. Good. Okay, put those back there. Excellent. Okay, what is this? Well, who knows? Let's see. That's going to keep her going. She's probably going to eat all of those and have terrible diarrhea. That's fine. 
Like daughter, like mother. Okay, oh, we got some notes. There they are. Enjoy your gift from Mishi. Okay, Mishi, thank you very much. That's a short and sweet. So this looks like a bag of mice. Uh, these are not quite the usual mice that, oh, as you see fit. Hope Crank likes her pickle. It likes her pickle. All right, well, we'll see what that means. I haven't seen the pickle yet, but I'm sure Crank will love it. Um, look at these guys. There's a little bag for them to go into, and they look like they're straight from Jim Henson with those eyes, don't they? Uh, especially the fact that there's like three of them, and they got this crazy little bit of hair sticking up out of the top, all three of them. That looks, uh, it looks very Muppets, doesn't it? It does to me anyway. I don't know how well you guys can see all that. Uh, they're very cute. There's a little baggie for them to go into. We'll figure out what to do with those. I've never seen that set of, of little rats before, but that seems like it's going to be a hit. I definitely like it at least. The little Jim Henson Muppet eyes really make it. I need a knife now. I'm going to go any further here, and I am going to go any further here. Okay, is this a pickle then? Whatever that means. Nope, it's Halloween. Look at that. Well, you don't have any Halloween in here, really, do you? Unless you count that brain. That's just a little creepy. Might as well put these out before it's too late, right? Here, why don't you take a couple of these? Are they all the same face? Well, they're not all the same. But there's four of one. Oh, no, they've got different mouths, too. Okay, so they are all just a tiny bit different. I guess there's only so much you can do with an embroidered um, uh, pumpkin. All right, I think the other three I'm going to toss somewhere else, like maybe in the bedroom, uh, to distribute those around. So I'm going to put those in my pocket right now. I did see there was uh, probably some other stuff in mailbag also from Mishi, so that's probably where the pickle's going to show up. So we'll just, we'll just hang on to that pickle thought for now. But this is not from Mishi. This is from Bremel. All right, Bremel. Bremel 1. Let's see, what is this? microfiber well those are always useful i'm assuming this is to help clean up after this girl somehow um, although this is the kind that i think you use a lot more for screens and glass i use them all the time for those little uh, glasses that i wear around maybe that's where they were sent is there a note let's see oh carry one or two in your pockets to clean camera lenses and i wear the vr glasses perfect yeah that's exactly what i was thinking uh, that is very useful thank you um, I do uh, have some of those that I use for it, but I also, I, I dispose of them fairly often because I don't think they're very useful once they get dirty and you can't really wash them and still expect them to be as nice on the glass. So I, I do think they're meant to be sort of disposable. Uh, for used litter pails. Oh, now that's also nice, but this is ocean water scented arm and hammer trash bags. Now that's cool. Oh, hey, it does kind of smell like ocean water. I mean, like somebody's conception of ocean water. Now, having actually been to the ocean since we moved to Connecticut, I know it just smells like dead fish most of the time. <laughs> but, uh, but that smells very pleasant. So uh, unlike my trash bag, which already smells like, I mean, my trash can already does smell like real ocean water most of the time. Oh, oh, you smell like you just made something. Did you just make something? No? Okay. I don't see anything. Wow, a lot of smells. Oh, I think you got it on yourself, didn't you? Uh, why don't I have any wipes in this room? Because usually I don't need them in here, I guess. And she would just yell and scream if we did. Are you still trying to make something? Because I can put you in the litter box to help you out a little bit, kiddo. Mom, maybe you've had enough of that. What do you think? I'm going to go grab a wipe, too, just in case. But she still gets pretty upset when I do. Hang on here. Oh, I'm dropping these pumpkins around. I guess that's what I want to do. I just had a big bag of wipes, but I can't remember where I saw it. So I'll just grab a couple from over here, I guess. Instead of bringing in the whole thing. And I can refill that later. Okay. Oh, mom's, oh, I thought mom was going to help clean her up, but no, mom's just going to help clean up more of those treats. Okay. All right. There's your last one. For now. I think you had enough. Uh, 
Okay, I'm gonna put it back in here and then she's all she's gonna care about for the rest of mailbag. Tiny, you want me to help clean off at least your leg a little bit? No, she most definitely does not want me to, but I'm going to anyway. Hi, kiddo. You want to sit with my shoes, huh? That's classic. That's classic you, isn't it? Here, let me just get that little bit off your leg if you didn't already. I know, I know. It's terrible. I know. It's terrible. Well, wait until I wipe your butt. Then it's really terrible. All right, here it comes. You ready for the screaming? Oh, that's, that's not as bad as usual. I do think it bothers her a little less since she had the surgery, but it still bothers her. <laughs> okay, these are clean ones I'll put right there. This is dirty one I'll put in the trash. Okay. Nice. Nice, nice, nice. Okay. I know. Well, you're probably just going to make a mess anyway, and that's fine. We're used to it. We just clean it up and keep rolling. Uh, Bremel, thank you so much. Those trash bags, I'm excited to try them out. They smell real nice. Hopefully it'll make our trash smell real nice. Okay, uh, this does not have anything on the outside to indicate whom it is from. Let's see, maybe there's a note though. Oh, wow, this is flopping fish. It's a whole bunch of them. Look at that, there's two in a thing and that's six of them, so I know who these are for. That's gotta be for uh, the kids downstairs, uh, plus one. But, oh, there we go. Uh, hazelnut and her hats. Yes, indeed, from Renault. Ren Renault? Renault? I still don't know. I'll never know. Even if you tell me, I still won't know. Renault. Okay. Um, those are really cool. Thank you so much. We've got the clownfish. Each one's a clownfish and some, I don't know. I can't, they all look the same to me. Uh, we'll say a giant minnow, just for fun. Okay. So those are super cute, and I know they'll be a big hit because this one loves them, and so do the kids downstairs. They find them fascinating. i got to recharge all the ones we have now. The shark downstairs, I think it's, it's dead, and there's one right here. Oh, here it is. A uh, goldfish that she was playing with that also needs to be plugged in for a bit. I should put that somewhere to go with me. Okay, uh, uh, Renault, thank you. That's going to be great. They love those things. Th that's gonna, it's perfect for their endowment since they're already used to playing with that one. Um, they, that'll be something they can appreciate, so... Fantastic. Okay. Oh, but wait, there's more. Uh, okay. This looks familiar to me. It's the uh, same. It's two more. And I guess this is one each for, no, this just says enjoy your gift. So I couldn't even guarantee who it's from. Enjoy your gift. Well, uh, right now, we're just going to blame you for these as well and say now we have enough for Crank and Gadget and spares. So thank you very much for that. Uh, to you or whomever, then, if it wasn't you. Um, that is a, if it wasn't you, that's a very fun coincidence. Uh, this is another box that had me concerned as I was going through Mailbag because it says it is from Troubadour and Apothecary. Not from Trouble and Carry, it says Troubadour and Apothecary. And um, just like I was worried that that first one was uh, maybe a legal letter, uh, this sounds very official in a, in a way that is uh, concerning. So um, let me go check real quick on that Chewy box before I forget, since there's nobody in my lap, and I'll be right back. Uh, I don't know why I say I'll be right back. It's not like you can't hear me as I go. What are you doing, buddy? Teaspoon was sitting directly outside the door for some reason. Okay, this does look like it is maybe a reused. Oh, in fact it is. Yes, I can see that now. It is a reused Chewy box. So this is it for sure. Perfect. Okay, let's get this next and then we'll do that one last and then we've got it all. I'm trying not to show off the addresses here, even though they're probably too small to be legible. I didn't cover anything up, so... There, now I covered it up. How about that? Okay. Hi, Stinky! Okay, I got a little Stinky here. Hi, little Stinky. I don't mind. I don't mind at all. I'm used to it. I never smelled that good myself. So... Maybe I should uh, get something. Do they make clothes like those trash bags? Ocean scent? The note, on air approved. How ideal, it says. Hello, Mr. A and Dr. DJ, faculty and students. 
Baba Ganoush and Stanza, here we are with full names again, send big purrs. They're big supporters of their alma mater, and they still love watching all the new students at the Academy. It isn't quite Christmas time at the Academy yet, so please find and close some cat treats for this trick-or-treat season and some terrifying blood-curdling Halloween-themed toys. Ooh. Uh, best wishes from Baba Stan and their humans, Nitten, Kitten, and Jimbo. Uh, P.S. Also enjoy some human treats. Well, thank you so much, human treats. That's got to be from Zingerman's, so that's pretty exciting. Uh, we'll find out in a minute. Um, but uh, uh, what was I going to say... I don't know what I was going to say. Something. I don't... That, um, okay. Uh, all right. That's why it's so important for me to interrupt myself and say things as soon as they get to my mind because then they just don't uh, stay there very long. So, pumpkin patch cat toys. Wow, we got bats and a mouse and some candies and some pumpkins. Oh, that's fantastic. I especially like the little pumpkin here with the feather coming out of his head that's a, a plaid pumpkin for some reason. I don't know why, but that is extra fun. Then we have the cat treats. We got bursts, those are great. We got churu, wow, that's a box of churu. I didn't know they made a box like this. That is, that's heavy, like that's all churu. And tuna variety pack, even better. And then we have a couple of, uh, yes, these look like Zingerman's probably. Just, I'd like to check, and maybe they're not. No, it says bingo roasters, okay, I guess not. Just, they look like something that was cool and local-ish, um, which might, in fact, be the case, nonetheless. Uh, bingo, wow. Uh, that's cute. Super Mocha Dark Milk Chocolate and Coffee and Super Classico Coffee Bar made with coffee and milk. Huh. Well, that sounds uh, equivalent to one half cup of coffee, small batch, bean to bar, uh, that's one third of a bar is equivalent to one half cup of coffee. So I guess if I ate the whole thing, I'd have a cup and a half of coffee, right? That's a good morning. Uh, that's That sounds like a plan to me. That sounds like a good excuse to eat an entire chocolate bar. So there we go. Bingo. Uh, that's also funny because people play bingo during mailbag with the things that I say. I don't know if bingo is one of those things since I don't frequently mention it. It probably is not, but uh, bingo. So there you go here. Uh, that's, that's fun. Bingo, bingo, bingo. Uh, I'm excited about that. Everything you send is awesome, so I know that is going to be no exception. Thank you very much. Um, all right, we'll organize all that afterwards, but we still got our one last box. The very official uh, Troubadour and Apothecary have sent. Let's find out what that's all about. There we go. Well, I see some Christmas colors and some other fun stuff, as I guess I would expect. Look at the size of that. That's a Mylar ball. It's got a little bit of extra feather on it, but this is like... That size right for you, isn't it? Okay, uh, that's a giant Mylar ball, as you can see. Here's uh, one of the fancy little Mylar and felt balls. Oh, look at that. Now, you, okay, but you just, you've got enough toys in here, though. You don't need everyone, but you can play with them. She likes that. I guess it's a little easier to manage than the, uh, the big Mylar. There's probably a note in here somewhere that we will find in due time. Um, but here's a bunch of wand attachments. Oh, including like a, is that a one wand attachment? No, those are just little poofy balls. So we've got poofy balls, a little mouse, a bunch of Logan's favorite things, and some feathers, of course. And then one seems like it escaped uh, somehow. There we go, probably right through there. I'm just going to tuck it right like that for now. Oh, actually, I see a few other things escaped, too. Kind of escaped. Maybe they weren't in there to begin with. Hi, I know it's jingly and everything. Look at that. Now, this is, uh, it looks like it's just a tiny little ball with a feather on it. It's got a loop at the top to go on a wand. Uh, but what you probably can't see is that it's made out of that same material like Maggie's bee is, like her favorite stuff, the little bee and the little mouse that she loves. So this looks like a toy for Maggie that she will really appreciate. And so, ooh, so is this. That's incredible. A little spooky. This has got, it's a spider. 
It's got, oh, four eyes and eight legs like a spider. The legs are made out of little pieces of leather and it's stripey too. And it's got a big old mustache in front. It is beautiful. It's really, it's really a lot of work goes into these. And that's also made of the same material as Maggie's little bee. He's, he's actually a little spooky. I don't normally get spooked by spiders, but he actually is a little bit spooky. So I'm sorry if anybody, if that's triggering for you. Uh, here is a just a plain old ping pong ball with real fur attached to it, though. What a great idea. And a little bit of rattle in it, too. I know. That's got to be a top toy, doesn't it? You want to try it? I know you like real fur. Here. I thought I could bounce that off the wall, but the, the tail sort of slows it down from flying so well. I think these have to go to Maggie. I'm just, in fact, I'm going to put them in my pocket. Okay. There we go. Right in there. You smell like you are continuing to, oh, you are. You got some on me, too. Pretty leaky. Okay, hang on. Yeah, that's a big leak, though. Let's, oh, that's a big one. Yeah, here. I know, I know. I got you, kiddo. Here. Better on me than on the floor. I can just throw these pants in the wash. I got to bring out the whole carpet cleaner if I want to do it on the floor. Don't I? Don't go anywhere, kiddo. These pants needed to go in the wash already, so that doesn't bother me very much. But let's make sure that you aren't super spreading that super poop everywhere. Okay, okay, come on now, come on. It's not that bad. It's actually not that bad. She would scream a lot more than that in the past. So that's nice. She's going to her strawberry now. All right. There we go. Sit back down here and, uh, all right, Troubadour and Apothecary. Um, oh, look at that. There's another toy in the Maggie tradition here. This one is even fancier. It's got a little fur tail on it. It's got some real feathers tucked in there. And it's got fur that is done. So I, I forget what they call the fly fishing technique where you take something that's bristly and you run the thread around it so that it sort of poofs up and looks like an armadillo or something. Um, that's what they've done here to make those stripes that you can probably make out. But even cooler than that, they've used some sort of fur in there. So each of these little stripes has a little layer of fur sticking out of it, which is incredible. That is just some, some real craftsmanship there. Uh, and I know Maggie will get a big kick out of that too. I'm just going to tuck that one back here too. I don't know where you found those, but those are incredible. All of them. So, uh, this is obviously something Christmas related with red and green like this. It has to be, but what is it? Oh, I see. Now it's a felted, uh, there's some nice felt balls there too. Uh, Christmas hut of some kind. Christmas pod. It's uh, very similar to the pods that we've seen before, although... Definitely with some Christmas styling on it. Oh, look at that. That popped up into a nice shape. They don't always keep their shape so well. And look at the hat that it's wearing with this, this little dangly bob on the end. That's uh, Susian. It's a very Susian Christmas feel to it, hasn't it? Uh, it's wonderfully felt. It is very thick. And it'll last uh, certainly a long time unless we let anybody poop in it. So we'll have to be careful not to put it where poopers are going to be. Uh, and I love the fact it's got little windows cut out here too, like a little house. Uh, but mostly this, this is what's so cool. This big old, it's just going to hang in the back so you don't get to really see it. But it's so cute. That's fantastic. Okay, I want to put it back in the plastic for the same reason. I don't want anybody to get into it quite yet. Uh, how was this folded? I don't want to mess it up anymore now. <sighs> I should have paid more attention to what I was doing. <laughs> He said, always, all the time. That's a universal truth for me. Okay, I don't know if that's how it was, but that's definitely a good fold right there. So we're just going to put this right, hide that in there. I know it smells good, I bet, doesn't it? Or are you just interested no matter what? Does it smell good? I'm going to put the balls back with it too, because those are nice little belted balls. Okay, now I can put it here and take the rest of the stuff out for us to have a look at. I don't want to set it in that poop on my leg though, so let's just... Try to take it easy here. Well, looks like there's not actually a note unless it's under the top flap, bottom flap. Let me just check the flap. That's fine though. We don't need a note from uh, Troubadour and Apothecary. A note from them would probably be trouble. If it was from Trouble and Carry, now you know that's cool, it's casual. Troubadour and Apothecary, a little much. Um, 
Wow, that's so cool. All right, oh, I know what that is. Okay, so here we got the smaller version of that same ball. Oh, I thought I could land them right next to each other. The smaller version of the same one for her. This is, what is this? P36? Wait a minute, how far do these numbers go? Uh, the P16 slower, quieter cousin charged and ready to deploy. I like the sound of quieter because that P16 is fun, but if you've got it like in the bedroom or something and you're trying to sleep, it's very annoying. Uh, what on earth? It's got suction cups and... No, it's not a suction cup. It's got little bits of rope, though, with uh, some sort of an attachment on the rope. Okay, I don't know if you can see that. I see in the picture that's part of it. So where the P16 has a little plastic frame that it uses to push itself around. This uh, does not. It's just a ball with a little motor on one side. So the shaft is only one sided, unlike the P16. Um, and then uh, this sticks on the end. I see how that works. Hang on. Oh, I see. It's just a sort of pressure fit right on there. Okay, let's put one on. Just like so. And then let's undo this. So it's just a, it's got a knot. I don't know if the knot's part of it. Yeah, I guess it is. It's got a knot and a string. And presumably this just spins at a certain, you know, speed and pushes it around a little bit and flaps this knot around a little bit. And I can see it would probably be a little bit quieter because it probably can't move quite as well. Okay, let's see how it works since you said it's already charged up, even though I don't want to leave it in here. Uh, let's just... Are there different modes like there are in the... Oh, there are, but I'll have to read the book to see what the modes are. Let's just go with that. Oh, I'm sorry. Did I hit you with that? Oh. Uh, I guess that's the chirping uh, mode. It must not... It must have a non-chirping mode if you said it's quieter. Or maybe it just chirped once to let us know it started. Oh, well, it is. It's a little slower. It's a little quieter. That's not bad. And the... St oh. Oh, I got very excited there. I don't know how well you can see that maybe from the camera behind me. That's fun. I think that's a lot of fun, actually. That's, that's going to be great. Uh, we got a plain old regular flat mouse. That's great. It's a plain old regular classic that all the kitties love. This looks like this is also something Christmassy. What is it, though? Oh, you always send the coolest stuff. I see the Kitten Academy logo all over this. It's some sort of a tree skirt. I think it is. That's, I think that's what it is. It's a tree skirt. Oh, and it says Kitten Academy on the one side, and it's got the little logo on the other side, a custom printed tree skirt. How cute. And Christmas green, too. Well, that's perfect. And the big ribbons to hold it on. Wow. Uh, is that two tree skirts then? The other one is the same, but in a red. Let's see here. Christmas red. Uh, trending a little bit orange like that time that we did the Christmas shirts for Kitten Academy and they came out a little bit orange. Uh, but I think this will look fine in the Christmas room and it is. It's the same. Look at that Kitten Academy, Kitten Academy logo. Beautiful. Oh, that's going to be so much fun. DJ's going to be so happy about that. We've got a whole bunch of Christmas stuff coming for her Christmas. She doesn't even know. Oh, she might know today though. I think she said she was going to watch Mailbag. She had to take her car in for service today, and uh, I decided that instead of helping her with that, I would stay here and do mailbag. Uh, my other option was to cancel mailbag. <laughs> um, but uh, she said that she was going to watch mailbag while she was there. So, hi. Hi, DJ, if you're watching. Hello. Um, and if you're not watching, I guess this will be a surprise. Uh, Trouble and Carrie, thank you so much. That is really, really cool. I'm not going to lie. I love branded stuff with our brand on it. I think it's, I think it's completely awesome. Uh, so this looks like, I thought at first this was a little flying saucer, but I think it's actually a little bouncy worm for Loganberry. The ones that come in the rubber balls. He loves those. Yeah, that's what it is. It's a rubber ball with a Logan worm on it. And uh, let's see if I can get it. Oh man, I almost caught it. Okay. Yeah, that's perfect for him. I'll tuck that in my pocket with the Maggie stuff. This, I'm going to turn off and we'll give it to the kittens to play with downstairs for a while, I think. There we go. I know, you had some fun with it, but you lo lose interest so fast and on to the next thing. Got the attention span of a gadget. Okay, put that right in there. Perfection. 
And that leaves us with one final thing to look at, aqua purr. I can guess it's some kind of a fountain then. Um, I don't think I've heard of this particular fountain though, so let's take a look. All right, oh, that's a lot of stuff. There's all kinds of tubing and bits uh wow um different size adapters oh wait a minute is this uh hang on it's got batteries and adapters and little bits of tubing in various sizes it's very complicated whatever's going on here and yes a pump of some variety so this and uh, uh, looks like some sort of a uh, add-on for a sink. Let's see what that's all about. The only fountain you never clean, it says. No cleaning. Cat triggered. One of Carrie's new favorites for you to try out. Trouble's not so sure about this thing that spits at him. That's uh, that's funny. I can see exactly where we can put this um, on the probably on the kitchen island. They do get up there once in a while, or eh, more more likely by the kitchen sink, the big one. Uh, so the aqua purr is a cat drinking fountain that sits next to your sink and connects to your faucet using a diverter valve. Your faucet supplies water. When your cat steps close, they activate the motion sensor that triggers the water flow. Your cat drinks from the spigot. The water they don't drink flows down the drain. When your cat steps away, it automatically shuts off after a few seconds. Uh, wow. And because of course of the diverter valve, you can still use the sink just fine. And it looks like it's made in Colorado and there's a complete instructions. And like I said, it comes with all the accessories and it looks like, oh, oh, even easier. I don't even have to get under the sink to do it. The little diverter valve screws on to the end of the faucet. Um, that's pretty cool. That's perfect. Much easier than I was even thinking. Well, that's a fun little project. I'm excited to try that out. And of course, you know that, it, that uh, most of the kittens reach an age where they're up on the counter all the time, checking out the sink and digging around in the, um, in the sink and the, you know, the checking stuff out, uh, watching me do the dishes. So this is perfect for, for when they get to that point. Now, the class downstairs isn't quite there yet, but they are surely getting very close. And uh, the faculty does get up there too, uh, especially Ari is up there every day next to the sink um, when he's waiting for breakfast. He likes to see uh, in the mornings, I mean, you know, I collect all the food from the day before that's left over and bring all the dishes down to wash, get fresh dishes out. And so he likes to look over yesterday's dishes from everybody and see what anybody had that he wants to help them finish. Uh, so he's up there all the time. That's perfect. That's going to be really fun. Thank you so much for everything. Everybody, thank you so much. Especially uh, Trouble and Carrie, this stuff is, is wonderful. So um, let's see. The treats I want to bring down separately. So we're going to put those in here. Let's see if we can get this all a little bit organized to go. I know. Look out. Okay. Uh, let's see. Might as well bring these treats with those treats. This can go into the stuff that we're going to mess with. That can go in there. Uh, separate these and that. This is going down to be charged. This is gadget and crank. This is for me. Uh, but these are notes which go into the basement storage. Okay, this goes down to the basement as well. Pack up this knife and my kit. Don't even think about it. I know you can still smell those treats in there. That's where the mice came from. They're not in there now. This is Halloween stuff. Why don't you have a little more Halloween in here? Like you don't have enough to play with, huh? Okay. The rest of these I will distribute around so they need to go in here. And then I'm going to collect some of this stuff too. There we go, because you do have plenty of toys in here. These are good stuff though. Um, I think these might as well get deployed as well. I'll put them in my deployment pockets. Oh, 
right back there. Perfection. All right. More for the discard pile. All right, I'm going to shut off my microphone before I forget, but I think I think the sound in here actually works if we start turning it on. And I'm going to leave the floor camera in here just in case it gets a good view, although it's pointed away from where she spends most of her time waiting by the door. If she's uh, hey, running around playing, though, it might be a really good view. Who knows? Um, and while I'm getting stuff packed up, I can leave Crank here. So let me do all that before I forget. Yeah, at first I thought that I saw somebody say it's Crank's bidet, which is uh, it's very funny. I, at first I thought it might actually be something like that. I wonder, we'll, we'll see how powerful it is. It's probably not right for that, but it's a cute idea. Um, what am I doing? I'm sure. And there we go. Okay, now you get to listen to her complain all day long or until somebody decides to shut it off. Uh, she does, by the way, a little gadget. Um, hopefully you can hear me. Gadget does get to go out. She usually spends all morning with me and Custard in my office. And she usually comes in the evenings and hangs out for quite a bit in the bedroom in the spa. Um, so, just so you know. I think this green pot is due for a wash. I think it's about time to put that through the wash. Uh, okay. Well, we'll get to it. For now, I will be back to pick up some more stuff. No, between you fart because you eat all those treats and her, it's pretty smelly in here, kiddo. I know. Get you some air freshness. You want to stay in here for at least a few minutes? What time is it? Uh, it might be about time for you to go get a chance at lunch, but we'll be in here for a minute.